Hello, everyone. Hello. Uh, welcome to the Pali Working Group meeting. I'm glad you all joined. And uh, please type your name and tell how you're feeling today. I hope everyone has done so. Okay, so our first agenda is any reviews on the release metric. So we have one release metric. Um, is there any way I can share the screen or can anyone share the screen? You could make Elizabeth, you could make Vinod just a co-host. I can share the screen too. Okay, mm -hmm. then it's perfect. Yeah. Yeah, so any reviews on the release metric? We have uh, one which is project popularity I'm testing the link over here. So let's see, they made a comment. Uh, how do you define popular contributors to a project? So I don't know. Um, has anyone worked on this one? So you're asking about issue 127, right? Yes. Okay. So I did. There's a PR that addresses Ray's comment. And is this PR closed? Well, let's take a PR. look. <laughs> it's yeah. open. I, I just, well, I clicked what was in the link. This is the issue. Um, looks like uh, removed. Is this the one, Matt, in response to one? Yes. Time? Yep. So it's been approved. I suggest we merge it. Any objection? Or do you want to discuss first? We can take a look at it. You can see the changes. Essentially, we remove popular contributors in a project. That looks like That's... a popular change. <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> All right. And All it was right. the only, it was just the issue that Ray had brought up was like, how do you define that? Yeah, fair. And which is fine. Yeah. So. Merged. Hey, yay. Yay. Should we uh, look at this share of voice org impact one next, or is there a discussion before we look at it? Yeah, open to the forum, anything. Uh, this was the action item for Matt to clean up this one. Yeah, you can see it's, <laughs> it's not done. <laughs> so, so there you go. Put it, put it on a, oh, I know, give it to me as an action item and then I'll work on it. <laughs> okay. I'm assigning it to Matt. I took it out and signed with my personal ID that I don't get the emails of everyone. So. Okay, then we have uh, labor investment. Uh, we have to revise. I've created a document for this one. For revising labor investment, that one? Yes, yes. So this was one of the very first metrics this group has released and uh, in the last meeting it was just says that this needs some love and devotion
So do, do you, how do you, how do you want that love and devotion to look? Do you want to work on it during the meeting or do you want to assign an action item? I'm open to anything uh, or I can take this as an action item, but I'll not be able to come in the next meeting. So maybe we can do it in the meeting after I can work on it. What kind of um, input do we have from various corporations in terms of how they look at this or how they determine it? Directly on this metric, um, other than being on this call or part of the initial conversations, no. So I think a lot of this is kind of abstracted from our time in the field. Mm -hmm. So kind of the kind of as a research mode, right? Do the field work, try to bring it forward in a metric like this. So so I, I don't know when the, the original so so we're currently in research mode or we were in research mode a while back. We were. That's kind of what you're seeing here. Okay. So do we need to to go back? and find out how well they track that stuff or? Um, yeah, I think that's fair. I mean, that could be part of the to do with this. So labor, this is labor investment. So this is a released metric at the moment. Right. And, and I'm guessing what we're looking at here, Vinod, is the released form of the metric. I'm not actually looking at the yes. website. No, this is exactly the release form of the metric. I've just copied it in the doc so that we can refine it and then okay, uh, uh, like so what was revise the, and release in the next. So, the so what was the was, concern? Yeah, what's the concern? The concern was like uh, this not truly represent a new uh, pattern of the metric, and like when we were discussing this uh, organizational impact, uh, this came up like is labor investment an impact or some there was some confusion in this uh, narrative of the existing one gotcha and it's interesting too because we just had this a similar talk in the asia pacific meeting about costs and being able to kind of direct line costs like financial costs to employee engagement and the absolute crazy difficulty in doing that. I so think, if, uh, if, yeah, yeah so like if, if okay. yep, so if, right, if, if Steven is an employee of the company that I'm a manager at, like mapping the work that he does to a financial bottom line is like this, it's like a three-legged stool where the legs are all kind of wobbly. Like it might work sometimes, but yeah. this is ready to break down. Um, I, think, and so, I think you can, okay. oh, go ahead. I was just gonna say, I think you can, it's easier to measure the cost because you could just tie it back to the number of hours if they're keeping yep. track of their hours but it's yep. the the financial benefit back to the company is i think the the hardest part of it which we were talking about because kevin had brought up um some kpis uh one of the previous meetings here in value and so we were talking about that a little bit in asia pacific because it kind of dealt with inner source we thought um and they might be interested in talking about it but the roi specifically was one of the kpis that we were like yeah how do you do that that's really really difficult and probably not going to be done well if it's done because then you know it's it ties you know that people will start to game the system and then it's just really it's not the way that you should be incentivizing behavior so um yeah it's it's fuzz, it's fuzzy and it's difficult so i i put those in there to kind of stimulate discussion uh because in 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 traditional project management we we have these kpis right there's these these tried and true ways that we understand how projects uh uh how much projects cost mm -hmm. and, and possibly how much value we're capturing so I, I put those in there to, I put that comment in there to 
kind of ask us to to think about what those would look like in an open source sense. Uh, and to uh, to Stephen's point earlier, uh, along with uh, labor investment, you know, those are things that I think maybe we we need to go to some organizations and and ask them, you know. Do you do you look at return on investment? Is there is there some sort of calculation you use for return on investment at a project level? So I've been asking that question <laughs> for years, <laughs> and I never get a response. And it's uh, literally that question: like, do at, you at the project level or just in general? Are you tracking the financial impact that participating in open source has? Mm -hmm. There's a desire to do it. It's but it oh, is yeah. very difficult because labor hours don't always map very neatly to a particular project. They may, I might be contributing to project A and at the same time project B because they're related and I'm trying to implement changes for both. And the when I move back and I mean, they're not tracking the fact that, you know, the whole thing takes me four weeks. How much does did I contribute to A versus B would, would be one example of how it's difficult to measure it to a particular project. So if, if there's a desire to do it, uh, then the problem, the reason that they're not doing it is probably because they're, it's too difficult or they're, or they're not sure how to apply those types of KPIs. Are there, are there creative ways that we could think about applying those KPIs to? Or what I have seen people do is look at the project level and how many contributions a company makes, not an individual, to particular projects over the course of a month. And they use that both to gauge their investment and then they also look at responsiveness to gauge the trajectory of the community. So the two are the two analyses are intertwined. And what would, so that would be a new metric. What would we, what would we call that? I, I don't know that it needs to be a new metric. It's just the way that it's kept track of doesn't, it isn't labor hours in most cases. It's number of, it's sort of an aggregation of different evolution metrics across the portfolio of projects a company cares about. I just get that from one example, but it could be that that company is not unique. I mean, and the fact is that we don't know, and there probably is a good deal of diversity about how this is done. Um, Sean, are you in the, the private channel of to do as well as the public on Slack? I don't know. No, I'm in the public channel, although I can't see it on this computer right now because I accidentally erased or I stupidly erased my keychain and I have to keep re-adding things. And I um, Kevin's there as chaos too, so he's probably in the public. I'm I'm in the private channel since I'm now my own OSPO. Um, so if we if we want to start asking that group about stuff like this. Um, I can certainly do that. Um, there's also been a bit of discussion in that space around metrics and this new thing debricked. What is it? Debricked. I'm looking at it now. Um, how to find the original message? Who was talking about? I have to remember who made the comment when. There's not what I want. All right, give me a minute to noodle and find this thing while, while you guys carry on that conversation. So. Well, I'm wondering if listening to you talk, Stephen, and to Kevin talk, um, I mean, maybe the question is to the to-do group, 
is is anybody um, mapping open source engagement to some financial measure inside of your company? Yeah. And that was the, the really the, the main purpose that I, that I put that comment in was to stimulate discussion about that question. It's stimulating discussion, that's for sure. So yeah. are you measuring engagement with, I'm putting this in the chat, engagement with um, open source in any financial Like that, and you might make the distinction between uh, in a in like a project mindset, in a short-term project mindset versus long-term investment in open source, because there there may be two different answers for for that. Well, there might be fifteen yeah. different answers for this, and so maybe just keeping it high level like this. Like I I would just love to know if there's any financial. Go ahead. In terms of what they're, what they're spending on people contributing or on what they see coming back. It doesn't matter. Okay. Is there a, is there any financial measure that you as a company are using to track engagement with open source? Okay, putting it in now. And it could be like costs you're incurring, I don't, we don't need to lead them, but it could be costs you're incurring. It could be savings you get by not developing it internally. It could be, to Kevin's point, like short-term projects. It could be kind of a long-term strategic gain. I don't, I don't know. Uh, Stephen, are you posting it in a private or in a public? Because I'm also in the public. Private, Either. okay. Because well. I figure they might they might be concerned about doing it in a public space, so it's probably safer to do it in the, in the, right. in the private one. I confirm I only have public access as well. Yeah, you, you have to be an associate member of the Linux Foundation and then get added to the to-do group and sign their stuff too to get into the public, the, the private one. We capture this in the minutes so somebody is. I have, I have captured it in the minutes. Okay. okay. So should we right. defer? It, it has been posted to the private channel. So Green. So I think we just wait. <laughs> yeah, we, yes. won't, we won't have to wait long. The private channel is pretty active. So okay. we'll we'll get a couple of responses today for sure. I probably would wait to send stuff back to you folks until it dies out. And there may be questions mm -hmm. they're asking me in between. So cool. So maybe a uh, thought on this, like whatever method we develop, can we post it to the private channel for their input on this? Because that that will be a direct link or connection with them for future things. When I think it'll take out, I think it'll alleviate the concern that Stephen had expressed earlier, which was are we guesstimating some of these <laughs> metrics? Because I, I think a lot of the other metrics that have been developed, say in DNI or risk, are coming directly from experience that people have. Right. In the field. Yeah. For sure. Um, evolution, and this, these were a little bit earlier in the life cycle of chaos. And I think they were a bit speculative. I think there's a, I do think there's some, some room for uh, creativity and, and speculation on our part. So in, in regards to 
the issues around organizational value, the, the thing that I hear time and time again is that we really want to know this, but we, but we don't always know how to do it. Uh, and so, the, I mean, those are the, it's the really, really hard complex uh, work that, uh, that maybe we can help them figure out. Or, Agreed. I, I would, I, go ahead, Sean. I agree. We can help them figure it out. I, I think this also might be a novel kind of a metric that points, you know, states its objectives and its goals, but perhaps points to a series of different ways that we have case studies to actually implement some measure of labor investment that's different. I suspect there's a lot of company to company diversity that, that maybe it'll settle on half a dozen or a dozen patterns um, when Stephen um, gets answers to his queries. But I, I doubt it will become one cohesive metric if yeah. we want to use the practices that people are actually using. I, I, I think it's good to get those practices and then figure out what we want to distill down from them to decide. Right. Yeah. That's a, a good yeah, better better strategy. So, um, I, yes, please go ahead. So, is is the chaos community drive a, a shared drive, or I don't? I, I seem to have links to documents in my Google Drive, but I don't have the main thing. What should I be looking for on well, Drive? One of, one of the things Elizabeth and I discussed is perhaps putting everything in that drive underneath a single folder that we can share. One of the limitations of having everything at the root with a Google Drive is only the owners of that Google Drive account can see the root. Um, and so if we had one folder that all the other folders lived under, then we, if we wanted to share the whole, that that's the way to do it. That's the workaround I've used in other contexts. Yeah, because I don't I don't have this one. I figured you know, putting the comments in the bottom of this, or unless we want to create a new document for this to do group feedback. Um, uh, but on labor investment? Well, like for example, the value group, I don't know that we do yet, but the value group ideally will create a folder in the chaos project, Google Drive. Yeah. <clears throat> and and um, I'm just suggesting that all those folders that we create would be under actually a second folder below the top level because then we can share that whole folder with others yeah. instead of having to share folders one at a time which is what you have to do if everything's at the root of the google drive that came up in the journal meeting like uh, our weekly tuesday meeting and it was like we just keep four uh, main documents like for every working group and the main meeting not for the every metric or any other document. And the rest is on the GitHub, so anyone can use the GitHub as a issue. That was the suggestion in the meeting. Okay, I so thought. I'll just, um, <clears throat> since, since we meet every two weeks, I guess, until that change gets made, I'll just condense this in an email and send it to Matt. So that make more sense? Yeah. Yep. yep. Our, yeah, or you, uh, you can create an issue on the GitHub and everyone can like discuss it on the GitHub. It'll be both the ways, whatever they want. Okay. Okay, so the, till the time we uh, get back from the to-do group, we'll, I guess, postpone to revise the labor investment. I'm actually excited to hear what they say. Yeah. I, I would love I would love to say, oh, here's our formula. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So next we have in the agenda is a Catholic focus area, issue 123. So I guess the first thing about that is, um, Matt, have you talked with the, the Center for Open Science guys? 
No, was I supposed to? Um, I, I did do an introduction email to both. Oh, no, I mean, I haven't, not beyond the email. Okay. So, I mean, they have, they have a pretty robust platform and it may be that we would look, we would look at what they're doing already. Um, so they do, they have a whole preprint distribution system for scientific articles. They have the ability to register, um, pre-register a research plan to get feedback on it. They do their own kind of repositories for scientific data and, and so on and so forth. They've been around for about seven, eight years. And um, it's a lot to, they've got a lot of data in there and it would be interesting to find out how, how they're doing, what we're, how they are doing what they're doing. Um, Mike, who's my assistant director, is looking at um, being able to import from them into Grimoire. Um, I think he sent Matt a note. Yeah, I did see that repo. Import what? I'll grab the repo here. Hold on. I have our first reply from Chaos, who replied. Do you mean direct financial sponsorship as opposed to indirect by employees contributing question mark? And I would just reply, yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I mean, it's either. If they have insights, either direction. I'm getting, <laughs> so here, Sean, I put the, the Center for Open Science link. Yeah, I put, it's an issue that they open so you can get a sense. For Percival. No, I put it in the chat, not that one. Oh, oh, chat, sorry. Or it's also in the, I put it in the minutes there. It's right top of page two. See it, the issue? Yeah, that. Okay. So when you asked like, what are they doing with Grimoire Lab? I see. Okay, cool. So, so Stephen, I'm also in, oh, go ahead, Sean. I can also offer to do the same thing with Augur if you wanna see what that looks like. Sure. Yeah, I mean, we downloaded, um, I mean, we set up on our own server a, a Grimoire Lab instance because we're, we'll probably be using that to kind of track um, faculty contribution metrics at some point. Mm -hmm. And so after we talked to, so the Center for Open Science's platform is called the Open Science Framework, OSF. And so we downloaded one of those two and we're, Mike's kind of goofing around with them. So what are the, the metrics? I know you don't like have them clearly defined, but is it, would it be things like faculty contributing preprints? Is it the number of preprints that are downloaded for a person? Is it so right now we're just trying to figure out what there is, right? Okay. But if they're, if they're, I mean, 
do they can we at at the the personal use level track um, numbers of downloads across all the projects or can we just do the ones we have and what do they have they're um you know they're willing to to get together and have a um have a conversation about what each of these platforms does and how they could help each other out okay whether it's just by putting an api between the two or whether it's something else but so if it's at the project level, would it be identifying faculty who are on the project and then working from there? I mean, I know you may not have the order worked down, but. Yeah, I mean, so, you know, like anybody else, what they can track is they can track obviously by whatever email address is on the repo mm -hmm. or on, um, you know, if that person is an official member of, you know, if they're, if they're on an OSF project and who's on it or a project that has been put on the OSF. Mm -hmm. um, so we're just kind of playing around to see what comes out first and then go back and talk to them about um, you know, where we can where we can interoperate, what do they want to do in terms of working with us about taking the taking what data they have out and finding other ways to use it. Okay. Um, so is OS who runs OSF? The Center for Open those? Science. OSF is their framework. Okay. So and so they offer, as I said, they offer a bunch of these services two scientists they've been running for about seven or eight years they are kind of a more science flavored and centered github alternative for scientific projects and so and they have these other services like i said they're preprint publishing and redistribution and um the the registration of research plans and um hold on a second Patty. Sorry about that. Um, all right, where was I? Well, it's, so it's with preprint. So it's interesting you're bringing this up because we just had a guest talk in our lab yesterday um, from some folks who are really interested in, in preprints and how preprints are used. It's a little bit different than what you're talking about. So their their discussion was about how preprints played an important role in the Corona case, just because it made data available really quickly, which right. is what we need versus a peer review process. And so, um, so you're looking at tracking preprints. So, so as as we would put our academic research work and projects on github or on gitlab or whatever mm -hmm. yep uh, they're having a lot of the science community do the same type of thing on their platform okay right and so you can put they have ways to put up your files your data your code your protocols all in one place so so they're trying to like um people in open source i mean we we have this this practice of there's some stuff in, in, in GitHub, but then mm -hmm. we're on other platforms to, to communicate to this group of people or that group of people or to get contributors for people in some cases, like you know, the writers, people working mainly in text are not crazy about having to pull requests and do these all other things. They just rather have, it's in GitHub, go, it's, you know, it's on my Google Drive, go put a comment in it, right? Why am I uploading and downloading and doing all this stuff all the time? So, so they're trying to kind of like build a better wrapper around that. 
for sciences matching the scientific disciplines just as GitHub and GitLab are, are built around how coders work, right? Um, so they have, if you look at this, here's their fancy graphic. If you scroll down from the top of that page, they have this kind of like image of what they do. Thank you, Sean. Just gonna bring us all here to what you just shared. So scroll, down. scroll down. Keep going. There. So they aggregate this information. Is that what they're doing? So, so they, what they're saying with this is if you put your stuff on our server, we will go out to these services, right? We have links to these services as well. Or if you already have stuff on these, we can connect to it so you don't have to move everything back onto our platform. So do they provide like what GitHub provides? Do they pr provide yeah, like repos science, and- Science flavored, right? So if you scroll up, so structured projects here, farther up to where the text, right? So here, you can go have and use them as your repository, right? You can have everything flow in and out of this one space on the project. So here is my scientific project and all of these pieces are self-contained here rather than being spread out all over the place. And if you really want your stuff to connect to other things, you can do that as well, right? So if you've got a lot of stuff in Dropbox or your research group uses Dropbox and you want to use us, we'll still link back and forth to Dropbox. So the it's basically a try, an attempt to consolidate the bricolage of tools that we all use. In uh, I love our research. bricolage, absolutely. Yeah. And you know, you, you can have your own free account with a certain level of stuff, or you can set up a collection with a bunch of different projects and pay them a little bit, or you can have an institutional license and do this, that, or the other thing. Um, what I have heard anecdotally from a couple of my faculty who know about this, um, they're mostly engaged with the preprint service, but that's only like a handful of people at one university. So like the X archive kinds of releases. Yeah, I just put that in the chat. Yeah, so essentially, basically, once it becomes published, the publisher claims certain rights that make this more difficult, I assume. Yeah, that's my understanding. So is, are your thoughts here, Stephen, to kind of track I think there's an assumption that OSF will have success in, in doing this. Well, they've been growing pretty fast for the past seven or eight years. And if you look okay. at the repository heading there, they've got 50 years of funding for their current service level. Okay. So um, they're not, you know, they're not a fly by night. At this Did point. you say 50 no. years of funding? I did say 50 years of funding. Wow. Yeah. Can I have 50 years of funding? <laughs> yeah, really. So then is the, so if I'm, so at the RIT OSPO, would it, is the connection here basically saying, listen, if you're at RIT and you're participating in science, you as a scientist, if you want to get credit for the work that you're doing in the open, you need to participate in the OSF workflow so that we can well you can, map. You can what what we're trying to do first and foremost is say, look, we want to do, you know, we want to try to capture what everybody's doing in whatever field, in whatever way you do it. Right. So 
if you're a digital humanities person, you do everything off the websites of the projects you built, we want to try to get the Google Analytics for that website. If, if you're using OSF, we want to find out how many people, how can we get beyond do something and then take three years to get yourself quoted in somebody else's article, right? How can we really deliver metrics for you to use with your annual evaluation and your tenure case and your promotion case where, you know, we can look at something right away. Like the last two years of your work may or may not have been registered yet, it may not have hit yet when right. you're looking at only the traditional services and, you know, well, I've, I've shipped 30 papers since in the, in the last two years, but nobody's picked them up yet. Well, what is gotcha. that? Right. And so you think that these kind of earlier moving systems are things like preprint systems, wherever they might be. Yeah, or, 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 things, or things that your, your current deans and chairs are not looking at, right? Gotcha. I want to, I want to, you know, at my university, certainly, but in general, shake up how people get evaluated for tenure and promotion at a university level where we're using menus, we're using methods that are slow and mean less and less. Yep. Okay. Gotcha. And so with respect to the, the OSPO at RIT is, um, what are you, are you helping to try and capture that, that early work, right? That is missed a lot. Is that what you're trying to do? That's one of the goals. And okay. so that's one of the reasons why we started looking at this. Gotcha. Um, you know, I expect to maybe have an answer to this, or at least the start of an answer to this in the next 12 to 18 months, right? This is not an easy thing, but we're, we're talking to these guys because we want to try to figure out what we can do with their stuff. And, and gotcha. So like one there, there in this, in, in some ways that there, there's a, there's an overlap in the Venn diagram between mm -hmm. chaos and these guys. And the idea is, can we figure out what it is? Gotcha. Does it make sense to work on it? Does it make sense to try to expand it or share that stuff back and forth more? Gotcha. So like one, from a chaos perspective, one horrible metric, one horrible like giant metric would just be called like preprints. <laughs> we would, there would be a metric around, pre, and I understand that probably looking at preprints itself would entail kind of a, a series of metrics that you would ask against a, a preprint repository. So, you know, I, right now, I don't know whether it's as simple, simple is a GitHub or Google Analytics, right? You know, Professor so and so he's got eight preprints up here, and here's the action they've gotten on them. Yeah, and, right. And, you know, oh, he's registered. You know, he's pre-registered his research plan, and here's how many people are commenting on that, right? You know, trying to right. start doing that kind of work. Right. So it could be like preprint downloads. It could be preprint comments. It could be I yep. don't know. So yeah. whatever whatever the metrics are under the hood of preprints that's why i said a terrible metric is preprints but right. there, there, there are probably some sub metrics under there you know but it's interesting we, i mean if if i ignore what the what a preprint and a um a preprint on their system and a chunk of software and a github repo is right you know there is some overlap between who's looking at it, who's using it, who's spawned something else off of it. If in fact, <clears throat> in these preprints, these guys get these kind of information back about, hey, Bill, I loved your thing. I'm using it in here, right? Right. So do you- I don't know for sure, but you know. It's super interesting. I, yeah, no, this is super helpful. Um, do you know James Howison? I do not. Okay, he's at Texas. He was- he went through the Syracuse high school and he worked with uh, Jim Herbsleb at I know Jim. CM. Yep. So at CMU, he was a postdoc there. So what's his last name again? Howison, H-O-W-I-S-O-N. All right. 
and he has a, a tool that has been funded by the NSF um, called Site As, C I T E A S. And what the overall goal of Site As, there's a lot under the hood here, but it's about trying to give people recognition for the software that they create and tracking that through citations. Yeah. And so this it's might be something. One, it's certainly one piece of the puzzle. Exactly. It might be something to kind of draw into the conversation that you're talking about. When you're talking about preprints, you're talking about GitHub activity, which kind of inherently means software, like at that, at that highest level, um, and how we might think about citations. And James, I mean, has been developing CiteS for a long time. Um, and so that might be something to capture as well. Yeah, super bright guy. Um, so that's interesting. This is really helpful to me and it helps me understand kind of where you're at at the RIT OSPO and kind of what your first angle is. Yeah, I mean, the, well, my first, uh, my this is like my second or third angle, right? Uh, I'm trying to, I mean, as far as the vice president for research is considered, the first thing he wants is, is an open work policy because we have nothing. You know, what we do that was our software or anything, there's nothing about the IP, there's anything. So that he's got me doing that. Sloan has me um, starting to support other people's research projects that will be running in the next couple of, couple of weeks. Um, and I think my progress on this question is first for my university and anybody else's university is to try to prepare a set of guidelines that may or may not be quoted from my university, but just be my, here's the, here's open at RIT suggestions, right? But um, is to come up with some guidelines, right? You know, if someone is trying to talk about their software in GitHub, um, you know, um, how do you evaluate those, right? There's a handful right. of research papers you can find that says, well, you know, in bioinformatics, here's how you can use GitHub to, to go ahead and address the impact, right? So um, the first step is guidelines. But while I'm writing those guidelines and drafting them and going to everybody on campus and getting their input, simultaneously, I want to start asking these questions, right? How can we be more formal about these and how can we you know in a larger picture how can we get things like site as and osf and chaos how mm -hmm. can we we build a thing that sucks all that stuff out or the stuff that's relevant and says you know hey you know here's how if we care about how much somebody else's work is used by other people and what kind of impact it has if it's digital, here's how we can figure this stuff out, right? The, the, alt, the alt metrics guys have a little piece of it and probably the most controversial piece because they're all about your, your blog posts and your Twitter feeds and getting people to take that seriously is difficult because there's this not irrelevant consideration um, that But, you know, I think this is how, how can that stuff be gamed, right? It's not like you can't game a journal article either, right? But so there's this alt metrics piece that talks about Google Analytics and Twitter and all these other kind of social media things that are kind of looked at side eye, you know. And then there's GitHub stuff, which is more concrete to a certain extent. There's the preprints and the other participation in my project tools that you can get out of OSF, right? So how do we get all of this stuff together for somebody who's in academia to say, look, here's what my stuff that's not a journal article is doing for the world. And I think this, this helps me a lot, actually, this the last 20 yeah. minutes. So I know, Vinod, did you have something? 
Yes, we are at the end of the time, so maybe we can continue. Or if you folks want to hang around, that is fine. But just to uh, let know everyone, we are at the end of time. Okay. And I have one last thing in the agenda. I'll not be able to attend next meeting, so I need. I'm looking for the facilitator for the next meeting. Oh, I can do it, Vinod. Okay. Thank you. This is super helpful, Stephen. Thank you. My um, pleasure. Yeah, it lets yeah, me think. It helps me locate metrics a little bit better. And you know, setting up a, a meeting where this group's talks to some of their folks to figure out yeah, yeah. where the interoperability might be is yep. something that you know you're. That I encourage you to set up. Yeah, yeah. No, I like that. Okay, cool. Thanks, everybody. Thank you so much. Thanks. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone.